I'm going to go for a walk on our property. I wanted to come, I want you all to come with me. Okay, um, I wanted to go for a walk and, and show you guys some of the interesting plants we have around here. Um, since we've been doing a lot of work outside lately, I've been noticing a lot of the different plants and trees that we have growing on the property. It's, it's only about an acre of ground, but it's really got some kind of interesting things uh, growing here. So I wanted to just share it with you all. Um, so I'm going to take you on a tour. Here's a pawpaw tree. This is what the leaves look like. So you can identify it in the wild. And this is the fruit coming on. Isn't that beautiful? Now the pawpaw, when you eat it, is, um, it's very strange to me. I'm, it's not a fruit I'm used to. There's some more coming up underneath there. Um, it tastes like strawberries and bananas, like a cross between <laughs> strawberries and bananas. And it's very soft, very smushy, and it has black seeds inside of it that you have to watch out for when you're eating it. I've never really cooked with it yet, but I have um, foraging books that have recipes for pawpaws. I think it's you can make desserts out of it and certain things. So I think I'm going to try it this year. I might as well. There's some more up there growing. So that's the pawpaw tree of my neighbors. He told me I have permission to pick all I want. It's actually a quite large pawpaw tree. Um, it must be a really, really old one. This, I thought, was, I thought it was shumac, a shumac tree. But shumac trees and um, usually don't get really extremely tall. But this is a very, very tall tree, extremely tall. And I was looking closer at it today, and there are some things on it that gives it away of what it is. See that? There it is. There. That. And they're up there. You might be able to see it inside the, under those leaves. It's a walnut tree. It's a black walnut tree. So I found that really, really interesting that there's a black walnut tree right here next to where we live. And there's the pawpaw tree. It's a really, really tall pawpaw tree. And um, some box elders back there, but um, the pawpaw, I find it very interesting to me. Uh, being from Ohio, I'm sure there's some pawpaws up there, but I never ever had ran into any. And it was not a very common fruit up there to find in the wild. But down here, it's it's pretty easy to come across. So I found it very interesting fruit. So, and then there's the black walnut tree. That's it's just really interesting to me <laughs> that we had a black walnut tree and I never knew it. I'm gonna take you guys on down through from one side to the other, showing you guys what it looks like. This is the one side. This is uh, towards our neighbor, our only real neighbor. The other neighbor is just um, the gas station. And I really like how there's this, there's these box elders and then a pawpaw tree. And it separates us from, kind of gives us privacy. And then big walnut tree and several other kinds of trees. And then, and then there's our garages. We have two of them. One there, one there. That's where we start store our RV. And that over there is um, like a strip of woods. A beautiful strip of woods full of um, willow trees and um, box elders and uh, a lot of hemlock, the tree, the hemlock trees, and it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. I'm going to take you over and show it to you closer, and that's, we just, uh, a dog crate that we 
just got for Jasper and then back to our trailer. So I'm going to take you on over and show you all the plants that I've been noticing over there. Um, I don't know if I could call that a hedgerow because it's just mainly large trees and bushes and weeds. Um, but it is a good divider. It gives us privacy from, there's neighbors back there, all along there, and you, you can't see them because the, the woods are so thick. And it's not a big strip of woods, but it's just big enough to give privacy. And then it goes all the way up here, and then there's the gas station. And um, so it kind of still gives us some privacy over on that side. As I'm walking over towards the woods, uh, I wanted to point out that this big, nice area that if we were going to be able to stay here and not have to move um, move to Missouri, we were going to use this as a, a really uh, like large garden for like things that need room, like corn and pumpkins and squash and things that uh, need a lot of room to spread out. And uh, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to use it as a garden. But um, it would have been nice. And uh, but yeah, there's the woods getting closer. Now there's some beautiful honeysuckle. Loads and loads of honeysuckle. And there's one of it, some of the remains. The honeysuckle's almost past due. These are just the last blooms on the honeysuckle. There's another one. But um, this is deep side inside is all covered in honeysuckle. And down, all the way down, there's big clusters of honeysuckle. And so just about two weeks ago, it just smelled like perfume. Every morning and in the evening, it just smelled like perfume. It was beautiful. Um, there, there is blackberries in here. This is a young cane. I'll produce next year, not this year. And there's a cane that is producing this year. Um, there's also poison ivy. Be very careful of the poison ivy. I'm, I used to be highly allergic, but I still break out. Not as bad as I used to, so I, I don't go into the woods very much. <laughs> I try to stay clear because it is covered in poison. But um, originally, I wanted to talk about um, elderberries. One thing we have to look out for now, this time of the year, is that elderberries are blooming. And I like um, foraging for uh, wild plants and, and herbs and things like that. But you have to be really, really careful and know how to identify uh, your plants. Because there is a plant called poison hemlock. Poison hemlock is what it's called, and um, it can be mistaken for Queen Anne's lace. Even touching a poison hemlock can actually make you sick. You shouldn't even touch it. Um, and it can po poison animals and even humans. People that are out foraging and they don't know what they're touching, what they're picking. They think they're picking wild carrots or wild parsnips, and um, they pick the wild hemlocks, and then they eat it, and they actually die. This is a very dangerous plant, and it blooms at the same time as elderberries. And so we're going to head up towards where my elderberry bush is soon, and I will let you see what an elderberry bush is. And the thing about elderberries, you can make uh, very good medicinal uh, things out. It's very good for boosting your immunity. Uh, for when you're fighting colds and fevers, you can take the berries itself and make a uh, syrup and, or elixirs and use them to fight um, to boost your immunities in the wintertime. And you actually can dry the flowers at this time of the year, pick the flower heads, dehydrate them, save them, and make a tea out of them in the wintertime to also boost your immunity. So you have to be very, very careful between hemlock and elderberry. So it just really has been, it's, it's made me think about it. But hemlock and elderberry grow along where it's moist 
uh, along the roadsides, along creek beds, where there's moisture that collects down in a little bit of a ravine off a little hill. Um, it doesn't always grow there, but when it's growing along the creek like that, um, poisonous hemlock also grows there, and they can be growing side by side. Uh, poisonous hemlock, if you even touch it, can actually make you sick. So it's very, very, very um, serious plant to watch out for. Uh, I want you. I want to encourage you to research it very, very um, deeply. So you want to wear gloves. You want to wear long sleeves and pants and hats. And I would even wear a mask. And when you get done touching it, you need to wash those clothes immediately. And then this way it, it will get that off of there and it won't spread or touch your skin by accident. saying much I'm only 5'4 but <laughs> it is a very tall bush and this is what elderberry flowers look like they're very beautiful very On the elderberries does not even look even close to the foliage on the poison hemlock but since it is a white flower you need to know what you're looking at and not just assume things um, and so people can get things mixed up and it is a big mistake and uh, but it's a very tall plant. You see how tall it is? It's much taller than me. And it still goes down into the bank, even deeper down there. See? Oh, and see where the water is standing? There, I don't know. I don't think you see it. But there's puddles of water in there because this runs off from the driveway of the gas station. And there's lots of water in here. And elderberries love where water, where there's water. And, um... So yep, yeah, that's the elderberries. Look, there's even a little uh, um, willow tree growing in with the elderberries. We got a storm coming. I don't know if you see that. We got some dark clouds rolling in. So I, I hope you enjoyed the walk around our property and getting to see the things that are here. The pawpaw tree and the um, black walnut tree and the the elderberry. Now, there, I'm so happy there's no poison hemlock actually growing on this property, um, but I am happy to be able to share that information so that you all can be very careful and watch out for your livestock and for yourself. If you like the video, um, please like and subscribe and click, click the little bell, and I pray that you have a blessed day.